Well, guys, it's been a little while since I've done this, but welcome to another episode of Monday Morning CAD. My name is Ryan, and I am the King of Booty Fab. If you haven't been here before, thanks for checking out the channel. I hope you stick around. I do some cool stuff here. And if you've been here before, thank you for returning. If you haven't yet, do me a favor. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, drop me a comment down below. Tell me what you think. But I'm going to get at some digital stuff today. Now, if you've been here before... You've seen these renderings. This is the rat rod I'm working on. And we're gonna focus on some of the benefits of the CAD work we do. This model here, most of this I built myself. I built the Oldsmobile motor, I built the superchargers, the frame, the seats, the grill that's on there now. I've downloaded a few models, like the nine inch rear, the Weber carbs, the wheels, the tires. I'm going to show you how some of this transitions. Now, some of this is in older videos. You can look back at the frame build, my intake manifold build, the seats. I've posted a lot of this already, but I got some new stuff to show you today, so let's get at it. Now, no matter how long I've been doing this, I still turn to resources when I need them, and I expect everybody that does this probably does the same thing. GrabCAD is a phenomenal resource. This is where I get a lot of my free models from, the stuff that I'm not. It doesn't have to be my own design. Um, you go into the library, you've got to sign up for a free account, but you can search your terms. So in this case, we're going to search LS3 because uh, I know that's where the models came from that I downloaded. You can see it pulls up all kinds of models. Uh, we got a cylinder head here. It's complete. It's got valves, valve springs, roller rockers. All the bolts are there. It's actually a super detailed model. Um, we've got a supercharged LS. Um, same thing. These are all they're probably scanned models. Somebody put a lot of time into them. You got to remember that you got to check your scale. You got to check your accuracy. But I found that a lot of these models are pretty much bang on, which saves a lot of the guesswork down the road. This is another model I've got on my computer. It's a bare LS block, and there's a ton of options on here. I find that I download a lot of models and then I go back later and I delete the ones that aren't good enough or I find a better version. I've got some old engine models on my computer. Um, I've been doing this a long time. i got a collection of them. But uh, I downloaded this LS3 model because I use it in my renderings for off-road chassis. I use it for a lot of stuff. You can actually pull brackets off of it as well, since the if the holes are accurate, this is how people program these out for CNC machines, so this is what I use. So let's take it to my software. This is the complete LS3 motor. Uh, this is straight how I downloaded it off of GrabCAD. Now this is a model I've used in the past. Like I said, it's super accurate. I put a transmission on the back of it. I can throw it into a tube chassis. I can throw it into a hot rod frame. It doesn't really matter. The big thing for me is it doesn't have to be perfect for most of my uses. It just has to take up space. I showed you this LS3 cylinder head. Same thing. Super detailed model. This goes beyond the scope of anything that I generally need. I don't need the roller rockers on it. I don't need the bolts. I just think it looks really cool when it's up on the screen. And it doesn't hurt me any to have detailed models. Um, you can see when you look at this though, somebody put the time in, there's, I wouldn't bother with C-clips and all that stuff on something like this, but I wasn't the guy designing these to have them cut. So it all depends on your usage. Um, you'll see why in a few minutes I've got those models, but I've also got this model. This is a stripped down LS block. You can see it's not complete. It's mostly there, but... Again, for what I'm using it for, this is a beautiful file. It served its purpose well. And we're going to go back to this one in a minute as well. But uh, like I said, if you're looking, you can find stuff. I have supercharger files. I've got a Hemi file, a small block Chevy. I've got a Cummins. I've got a couple of LS files. I've got transfer cases. You can never have enough of these. They don't take up a whole lot of space. And I mentioned Supercharger. This is one of a few models that I have. And this is, I'm going to tie in directly here, show you where I'm going with all of this. But uh, this was a great model when I was mocking up rat rod ideas. Just to be able to throw up on an engine, see how it looks. 
I actually took this entire model a step further and uh, I'm just going to switch over to the camera here and I'm going to show you how. Now back when I was working on my other car, I've got a big block Cadillac in that. I designed an entire tunnel ram and it's put got a 671 blower I'm putting on top of it. And before I even had the blower, I downloaded the model, double checked it with some measurements online for accuracy. And I designed an entire tin supercharger. This is a 671 blower made out of 14 gauge steel. You know, this metal line around. Um, I actually designed it so that this piece here, it's a piece of exhaust tube. It slips through there. It's a little sticky right now, but it actually slides in and out so I can mouse with snout length. Um, it's got a back cover on it. It's got bolt holes and stuff. And the bolt pattern is actually accurate. You bolt this down to an intake manifold. I mean, heck, I could weld this up and use it as a dummy intake. But uh, I kind of like having it sitting on my desk. It amuses me. And it was nice to throw it in there, check for hood clearance and stuff. It's not perfect, but it's close enough that if you're not trying to get within an eighth of an inch of a cutout on the hood or something, I could throw this up here. And uh, I don't have to worry about this getting sparks on it. I don't have to worry about it rusting up and getting destroyed i can use it for mock-up and honestly one day i'll probably turn it into a lamp but for now i like to look at it when i'm working so let's go back to the computer and i'll uh show you where i'm going with this now before somebody tells me that this isn't the video they want to see it's not the video i intended to put out i had a family emergency and i had to step away for a little bit um I had some time in the evenings, and what you're looking at is about a week's worth of evenings for me, messing around. I saw pictures that somebody had done a mock-up LS block online so they could bolt exhaust manifolds, intake manifold, oil pan up to it, mock it up. Uh, anything that saves my back makes me so much happier. So what we're picturing here is an LS engine block. It's based off the model that was there. I verified measurements off of my own engine, but the internal stuff, I just can't do ac as accurate as the model was. So this engine block as it sits, computer says it's going to be about 22 pounds without weld. That's something that even me with my poor back right now, I can pick it up. I can put it into place. This has bosses for engine mounts built in. I can put nut certs into all of these holes and have threaded holes. I can bolt up a water pump, bolt up an oil pan, an intake manifold. I can bolt it up to a transmission. I don't have to worry about sparks and damage to an expensive drivetrain. I can use this and let it sit out in the car and not have to worry about damage at all. Now, I've modeled up the Olds motor that's in the rat rod. There's videos on that if you step back. And the process behind this is process I've shown before. So this is a little bit of me showing off that I'm actually pretty proud of how this one turned out. But it's what I've been working on while I can. And somebody said, well, you can just bolt the cylinder heads on. And well, I wanted to build cylinder heads too. It's just like the supercharger. Sometimes I do things just because it amuses me. Cylinder heads on the engine block here. That total package without weld or any hardware is under 40 pounds. And 40 pounds, one of my kids can pick it up and put it in on their own. This is going to be useful in the future to me. Uh, I've got some LS builds coming up down the road. And honestly, I might even offer these up for sale. I haven't decided yet. But it's something that I'm entertaining the option of. And honestly, if I use it once or twice and turn it into a coffee table, the only one that might complain is my wife. But uh, I think I might get away with it. But I've done this before. I'm going to do it again. I just wanted to show that if you get into the CAD work, this is stuff you can mess with. You wouldn't want to pay somebody to have to design this, believe me. But if you can put the time in yourself, you turn out some cool stuff. Now, I've taken some really big liberties with the design in this. The cutouts here, they serve no real purpose other than to save weight. These holes could have been any shape. But you can see the entire framework of this, the skeleton, the structure, it's all put together with tabs and slots. 
the valve covers have bolt holes that would allow them to bolt down. The exhaust manifolds would bolt up. Big windows and everything. And I included a two inch hole front to back on the crank center line. It's, my buddy had pointed out to me that if I do end up building a bell housing, I could actually use this for mock up. So you get at the back side of the hardware for the bell housing bolts. I don't even have to use nut certs. I can nut and bolt anything on this, which just makes it more usable for me. And of course, while we're on the subject of CAD, you've seen a quick peek at these. Um, I don't think I showed any of the actual CAD work. If I did, you get to see it again if you watched it. But I designed these panel box to accept Willwood Masters. Obviously, I'm going to a manual transmission. I wanted a hydraulic clutch. I specifically wanted floor-mounted pedals and individual master cylinders. And I want a mechanical linkage on this car. So I've designed this setup to have a bell crank with mechanical linkage and himes. The pedals should look super trick on the floor. They'd be completely adjustable. I could slide them back and forth. And to match that, another inline master cylinder. It won't be running that master. I've actually already got the master that goes there, but this will run in line, hooked up to my front brakes. It'll be my parking brake. You pull the handle, lock the lever up, but having it on the front brakes means better burnouts. So that's uh, the plan there. And since we're doing sneak peeks in CAD today, this is a project that I've been working on for a while. This is going into the rat rod. There'll be a complete how-to on this. Essentially what I'm going to be doing is cutting out a stainless steel skeleton for the steering wheel. I'm going to be 3D printed, printing the pieces that show up in green here, molding them in silicone and casting them directly onto the wheel in epoxy resin with matching shift knob and parking brake handle. Um, not necessarily green, but it really pops in the rendering. I wanted a steering wheel of my own flavor. I wanted something specific and I want to build everything on this car. And honestly, a steering wheel is just one of those things that a lot of them feel so cheesy. I just figured I could do it better. So I am. And it's really exciting news for me. Good friend Doug called me today. He's got a bell housing and trans for me. It's a BOP bell housing and an A833 trans from, I believe, a B-body Mopar. Doesn't bolt up directly, but I am pretty positive I know how to make this go together. Uh, it's an overdrive four-speed with a three-to-one first gear. Should work wicked in this little car. And if anybody happens to know what this trans is, we'd greatly appreciate knowing Pretty sure it was shifted three on the tree. The shifter's aftermarket. The input shaft is about four inches longer than the other. And I'm reasonably certain that's a flange for a drum parking brake. I'm pretty sure I'm going to find out that it's late 50s, early 60s Chrysler, maybe. But honestly, we have no clue. So reach out. Drop me a comment if you know. So what do you guys think of this block? I'm, uh... I'm pretty stoked about it. Like I said, I'm going to turn one out for me, one for my buddy Dustin. I'm probably going to cut out a Cummins and a small block Chevy, see if anything else piques my interest. Probably a couple of trannies, maybe some transfer cases. And like I said, anything that saves my back, I'm happy with these days. Plus, honestly, I think it just looks cool hanging on the wall. Uh, is this something you'd be interested in? Drop me a comment. Let me know. Hit me up on social media. Same thing with the steering wheels. I'm really stoked for that project. I've wanted to do this for years. I'm finally getting a chance to do it now. If that's something you'd be interested in your car, you want me to show super detailed how to, well, I'm going to film it anyways. It's coming up in the future, guys. Bear with me. But for today, I need to get this video out more for me than anything. We've gotten kicked a couple of times this year already, and it's taken me away from the house, the family, the projects, a whole lot of stress, but I think Think, fingers crossed, things are starting to wind down. And I got a lot going on in the shop that I got to show you guys right away here. I'm excited about where this is going. If you tough this whole video out for me and you haven't subscribed yet, why not? Please do me a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Or uh, drop me a comment. Tell me what you think. Do the whole YouTube thing. And I'll see you again soon.